Hi, this is Krista at The Secret Yarnery. Today we are making this beautiful stitch sampler cowl. You're gonna love this pattern so much. It's super easy and a great way to practice all of those stitches you've just learned. So we're just gonna be doing the four stitches, single crochet, half double, double, and treble crochet. And we're joining in the round, so working in a spiral, no stepping up, joining, slip stitching, nothing like that. We're just working around and around, practicing one new stitch every round. You're welcome to do the same stitch repeat that I did, or you can do whatever stitch repeat you would prefer. Or if there's a stitch you want to practice, you could do that more often. Or if there is a stitch that's difficult for you, you could use this as an opportunity to practice that stitch. If your stitches aren't perfect, it's still going to be fine because it's all going to be wrinkled up underneath your neck and you're not going to see all those imperfections. If you'd like to follow along with a written pattern, it's available over on my website, secretyarnery.com. To make the stitch sampler cowl, you'll need 100 grams of a four weight, a worsted weight yarn and a seven millimeter crochet hook for your cowl and an L hook or an eight millimeter just for your chain. If you don't have a seven millimeter, I'll link it in the description box down below, but you can also just use your six millimeter hook with a larger hook for your chain if that is what you have. I like using larger hooks for garments. It gives it a really nice drape so it's not so stiff. And you will also be needing eight stitch markers and a piece of contrasting yarn, 14 inches. So let's get started. So get your stitch markers handy and your yarn. We're gonna be using our larger hook for this part of it. I'm using my eight millimeter. If you don't have an eight millimeter, you could use the same hook, but just crochet loosely. So make a slip knot any which way you normally do. Shrink that down and pop it onto your hook. Now we are going to chain sets of 10 for a total of 80 chains. So just chain 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. And I'm not correcting my tension or pulling on my yarn. I'm just doing a nice relaxed chain. So roll those pretty little V's over onto their side. And right underneath the working yarn, you'll see these back loops, these little camel bumps. That's what we're looking for. We're gonna go into the very first one right here with a stitch marker. So just pop a stitch marker in. If you don't have a stitch marker, you could use a paper clip or a bobby pin, or you could just chain 80. This is just to kind of keep track of our chains. We don't have to count 80, but you are welcome to count 80 and not use stitch markers. And now chain another 10. One, two, three, and 10. Roll it onto its side again. Find that back loop right underneath the working yarn. Pop your stitch marker in just like that. And now keep going, chaining sets of 10 and popping in a stitch marker until you have chained 80. So I've used up my eight stitch markers and chained 80. Now we wanna lay it out flat. So we want the pretty side, these little V's facing up and our stitch markers facing down all the way around. We don't want any twists. So just look all the way around, making sure it is not twisted. All the V's are facing up and we wanna switch hooks. So put in your smaller hook and now we're gonna slip stitch right into that very first chain we made. We want two strands of that first chain on the top of our hook. Take your hook and pop it into that first chain, two strands on the top of your hook, and we're gonna slip stitch to join. So bring your yarn through and bring your yarn through. So that is a slip stitch and chain one. Now we're gonna be working into the back loops for this pattern just so it looks really nice top and bottom. But if working into the back loops is hard, you could work into the front of your Vs. You would just be looking all the way along for the bottom loop, this little moon at the bottom. So one, two, three, four, five, six. You'd be looking for these little loops and you'd be going in just on top of that bottom loop. And that's how you will keep track of your chain and keep track of where you're gonna be working into it. 
but we want to work into our back loops if we can. So flip that chain to the side, and we're going to be looking for these little camel bumps along the back. Now there is one hiding right here. So there is our first one. So there's one, two, three, four. We're just going to be working into this one camel bump. Each camel bump is going to be getting a stitch all the way along our chain. So for the first row, I'm just going to be doing single crochets, so no wrapping the yarn. And into that very first camel bump, just one loop on our hook, one single crochet. Into the next camel bump, you can see it now this one is ready to go. So there's one camel bump, two camel bumps, there's three. We're going to go into each camel bump or each back loop and make one single crochet. Just really slowly, this is tedious, it takes some time, but just keep going along one single crochet into each stitch, just trying to work into the back loop. And then that'll give our work a nice finished top and bottom. So that's the bottom of our work, and that's the top of our work, and it matches. So that's a nice way of working into your chain for anything you're going to be wearing. So you can pause the video and keep working along one single crochet into each back loop or each camel bump all the way along your chain until you get closer back to where we joined. So lay your work out flat again, making sure it's not twisted. We want to be working in to the top of our row and opposite side than our tail. So make sure your tail is not where you're working into. You're working into the stitches on top and that your ring is not twisted. And my next stitch is going to be right there. So grab your contrasting yarn and just lay it over top of your work. So like that, we just want it laying in there. We want to catch it when we make our next stitch. That's going to show us where we started our round. So now into the next stitch, you can double crochet for our next row. So I'm going to wrap my yarn and go into that stitch, push it in. Now this stitch is small. It's our little chain one. Just like that, and make your double crochet. Just like that. Don't worry about this hole and how it looks like it's all weird. We're going to use our tail to sew that shut when we're finished. So now keep working around this row, one double crochet into each stitch, and your stitches are now easy to see. We have worked into this one. You can always just trace your work back, your yarn, and find out what stitch you worked into. We worked into this, so we're going to go into our next stitch right there, and we're going to work into each stitch all the way along, making sure we get two strands of that V on the top of our hook for every stitch all the way along. So you can pause the video and keep working around one double crochet into each stitch, making sure you get two strands of that V on the top of your hook all the way around, and I'll meet you when we get back to where we started this round. So now back at that join, we are going to flip our yarn up and over our work, that contrasting yarn. We're just going to put it over the top. That's going to be our stitch marker as we go along just to keep track of where we're starting a new row. So for this row, one half double crochet, one into each stitch all the way along, making sure you get two strands of that V on the top of your hook. Work all the way around, and I'll meet you when we get back closer to our joining yarn. When we get back to where our contrasting yarn is, where we started our round, every time we get back to the beginning of a round, we can just flip it over front to back, front to back, and that'll help us keep track of where we start a new round. But also, as we're crocheting, it is going to slope slowly towards our dominant hand on an angle, on a diagonal. So if you want to keep it going up and down straight, just kind of eyeball it, like lay it out flat and look at the direction it's going. It wants to go this way, naturally. So every once in a while, put in one extra stitch. I'm going to put an extra stitch in here. And now I'm going to flip it over because I want it to be going up and down straight, just so my seam is in one spot, not going across several inches of my cowl. So just eyeball it to keep it going up and down straight. And now pick your next stitch. So we've done single crochet, double, half double. The next stitch I'll do is treble. 
So that is wrapping your yarn twice on the fat part of your hook and one treble crochet into each stitch. I will link the stitch up in the cards if you want a refresher on how to do your treble crochets. And we're doing it into the same stitches as before. We're just doing a different stitch. So one treble crochet into each of these stitches, making sure you get two strands of that V on your hook all the way around. And I'll meet you when we get back closer to this contrasting yarn. Back where our join is, it's going up pretty straight because we skipped that, because we did that extra stitch before. So go ahead and just toss that yarn behind just to keep track of our where we're gonna change our stitches row by row. And now into the next stitch, you can decide what stitch you're gonna do. And I'm just gonna keep repeating this order. So I'm going to do single crochet next. So into that next stitch, single crochet. And one single crochet into each stitch all the way along just like that, and then I'm gonna keep working my way along, changing my stitch every time I get to my contrasting yarn, keeping it going up nice and straight, and using whatever stitches I feel like. So I'm gonna be doing single crochet, double crochet, half double, treble, single crochet. And I'm just gonna keep repeating that order all the way up. So pause the video and keep working along, doing whatever order of stitches you like. And I will meet you when you have finished up your yarn. So as you are working on your stitch sampler cowl, you just lay it down in front of you, like horizontally flat, and just keep that stitch marker yarn, and just keep that yarn, that contrasting yarn you use for marking, just going up. You can see how many times I kind of skip over, skip over, skip over. You want that to be going up straight. It doesn't totally matter. If it goes on an angle, it's fine. But you can always just kind of keep jumping over. And also remember to always be working into that stitch where you are moving your yarn on top of. So make sure the yarn isn't covering up that stitch or when you are moving your yarn, be mindful that you have to go into that stitch as well. So when your cowl is about 12 inches tall and or you have a little bit of yarn left, I'll just show you how to finish off. You wanna end on a row of single crochet. It doesn't have to be in the exact order that we did for our cowl, but a single crochet is a nice finished edge. It doesn't have as much stretch as the other stitches do. So we're just gonna end with one row of single crochet. So you're gonna pop that contrasting yarn back on top and make sure you've gone into that stitch, you've done your, your uh, crochet into that stitch that we're gonna cover up with the yarn, like that. And now one single crochet into each stitch. So you can pause the video and just keep working around. One single crochet into each stitch all the way around until we get back to where our contrasting yarn is. So now back up where our contrasting yarn is, just gonna keep single crocheting all the way and into that stitch where my first single crochet is, just past my contrasting yarn, I am gonna just do a slip stitch. So slip stitch, you put your hook in, grab your yarn and bring it back, turn your hook, and bring it through. So that is a slip stitch. We're gonna do that three times. So that was one. We're gonna slip stitch into the next. So bring your yarn back. Turn your hook facing up or away from you and bring it through. And one more time. Put your hook in, grab your yarn and bring it back. Turn your hook and bring it through that stitch. So that just tapers down our row. And now we're just gonna chain one to secure our work. Always chaining one at the end. Cut your yarn, leaving a four or five inch long tail. Pull your hook up and your yarn through and snug that down to secure. Now we can go ahead and take out our contrasting yarn. We can just pull it on the one side, just like that. And that is our join. And it goes up all in one area. I can't really totally tell. So that's why we use that yarn to keep track of our join. Now we can sew in our top tail and we can sew in our bottom tail and we're finished. 
So I hope you enjoyed this class as much as I did, and I'm really looking forward to the rest of them. There is a link to the playlist for the classes in the description box down below. If you haven't joined or subscribed to this channel, go ahead and hit those links. There's also links of where to find me on social media. I'd love to see how your coasters turned out. Let me know in the comments down below if you have any questions, and we'll see you in the next class. Stay hooked.